You're watching Unreal Ant Gaming. This is Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. You want to see me turn Super Saiyan? Or should I take it to the next level? I'm also the narrator, too. Next time on Dragon Ball Z, make sure and smash subscribe to Unreal Ant Gaming. With Dragon Ball Super manga chapter number 62 now officially in the history books, tension continues to build with Moro now recovering his power through the consumption of the artificial 7-3, along with gaining new abilities and strength that 7-3 once possessed, in putting our heroes now in a very difficult and dire position with no means of escape or leverage to stop him, the question now becomes, are our heroes prepared for the fight of their lives against a seemingly unstoppable opponent, or will our heroes find a way to overturn the odds in their favor and rip Moro apart. Are they prepared to withstand Moro's new power, or will Moro absolutely annihilate everyone? As once more before we begin, if you are new to this channel and have a love and passion for all things Dragon Ball and anime related, then make sure to go on ahead and smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications by clicking on the bell icon to never miss a single upload on this channel, as well as giving this video a big thumbs up by smashing that like button down below if you guys are loving the direction of the Dragon Ball Super manga and cannot wait to see this be animated within the actual anime itself. And if of course you guys want to catch up and check out all the best from the Dragon Ball Super manga, then you guys can go on ahead and check out the official Dragon Ball Super manga playlist located down in the description box below to where there you guys will be able to find all the latest and best from the actual Dragon Ball Super manga. So if you want to catch up and find out more information on what's been going on, then be sure to go on ahead and check out that playlist located down below. As we kick off Dragon Ball Super manga chapter number 62 entitled Desperate Situation, with Gohan, Goku, Jocko, and Piccolo having to observe a newly rejuvenated and fully powered Moro, and with the situation having to seem much more dire than how it was before, Piccolo then went along to ask, has 7-3's power been added to your strength? With Moro having to respond, indeed, and with Goku looking on, he then also commented, crud, it's one thing after another with this guy, until out of nowhere Vegeta comes dashing up from the ground with everyone crying out Vegeta and with Moro looking up Vegeta transformed back into Super Saiyan Blue Evolution and as Vegeta is shown extremely angry he then went along to ask is that so I'll tear you apart once again and the second Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta charges directly down at Moro Moro looks up with a grin on his face because he knows that he's the one in control of this battle as of course Vegeta then begins to attack out of blind rage, he charges on in and he attempts to actually swing at Moro so hard, with Moro having to quickly sidestep out of the way and causing Vegeta to go slicing right through the cliff, which is also a testament to how cunning Moro is because he's simply baiting Vegeta at this point and Vegeta is to his own detriment going into this battle against Moro now with the mindset of not only having to be blinded by rage, but he ultimately just feels embarrassed after what had just happened, especially with Vegeta holding a massive victory over Moro before before Moro had outsmarted him, and as Vegeta went along to glance back up, he notices how Moro is looking back down on him, and he's grinning, he's treating this like an absolute joke, and Vegeta being Vegeta, what he winds up doing is powering back up, and shooting himself back towards Moro, as of course he begins to attack him, and every single time Vegeta is attempting to actually land a singular shot on him, Moro to his own credit is bobbing and weaving, he's ducking and dodging, so he's clearly making light work of Vegeta, and further demonstrating his newly found powers by just simply avoiding all of Vegeta's attacks, and as Moro continues to counter all of Vegeta's attacks, he only then went along to comment, your new technique requires you to inflict damage first, yes? I won't make the same mistake twice, as Vegeta went along to shout, damn it, because now Moro knows, and with everyone looking on, Gohan went along to shout, Vegeta! He might have absorbed 7-3's abilities, but the rule says it only lasts 30 minutes. And with Vegeta looking back, Piccolo then responds, right, he'll be back to his former strength if we run out the clock. And with Moro overhearing this, he then begins to laugh and responding, <laughs> this power has returned home. 
There is no time limit, in fact, and as Moro then phantom blitzes Vegeta because Vegeta is shown attacking, but then out of nowhere, Moro just vanishes until he winds up popping back behind Vegeta and grabbing him by the back of the neck. And keep in mind, Vegeta doesn't know anything about 7-3, so he has no idea what Moro had just done, and with Piccolo, Gohan, Jocko, and Goku looking on in absolute shock, what Vegeta winds up doing is breaking free by slapping away Moro's hand and commenting, unhand me, because he has no idea what had just happened, until of course we got to see right in the middle of Moro's palm, how there is a circular sphere with Vegeta's face on it, and with Vegeta having to notice this, he then went along to ask, what? What's going on? And with Moro then following by clenching his fist, he then responded, I've gained his copy ability. With Gohan having to shout, Moro, that scum! Did he just copy Vegeta? And with Goku not knowing what the heck is going on, he then went along to ask, What's this copy thing you keep talking about? With Gohan having to tell him, 7 3 could copy a person's abilities by grabbing their neck. And I think he managed to copy Vegeta, as Goku asks, abilities, huh? But it was only at that moment where Moro now is beginning to go on the offensive, because what Moro winds up doing is striking Vegeta with such force directly in the forehead, to where now Moro is beginning to bring the pain to Vegeta, he's attacking him, punching him left and right, until he winds up giving Vegeta a bone-rattling headbutt to the face, where it causes Vegeta to go flying back down onto the ground, where keep in mind, not only did he retain all of Vegeta, Vegeta's abilities and moves, but is now further demonstrating the difference in power that Vegeta has by comparison to his own, to where instead of having to crash right through the ground itself, what Vegeta winds up doing is being cognitive enough to actually break his fall by having to further land on his hands and knees, but this doesn't mean that Vegeta is not in pain because we get to see how he's clutching onto his forehead, he's bleeding, there's blood coming from his mouth, from his forehead, so Vegeta is clearly injured, and at that given point is when Vegeta notices that Moro is beginning to glow because the second Vegeta goes on ahead to glance back up, he observes how Moro is standing in a very familiar pose and this pose is none other than the Big Bang pose. And because of Moro having to condense and formulate energy around his palm, Piccolo, Gohan, Goku, everyone notices that, in fact, this is one of Vegeta's signature moves, and in a panic, that's when Gohan went along to shout, that, that's Vegeta's move, with Moro asking, Big Bang Attack. Isn't that what you call it, Vegeta? As seconds later, what Moro winds up doing is firing the Big Bang attack directly down on Vegeta, and with Vegeta having to stare back up in absolute shock, because keep in mind, he didn't know 7-3. He didn't know that 7-3 was able to mimic and copy moves and abilities, and being the fact that that's what Moro had just done to Vegeta, he's now going to experience his own attack used against him, and that's when we observe how this attack actually winds up connecting down on Vegeta, and this Big Bang attack rains so heavy down on the ground to where it not only engulfs the entire landscape with a blinding white light, but also it had shattered and destroyed everything around the surrounding area to where by the end, after Jocko, Goku, Piccolo, Gohan, and the androids had shielded themselves from the force and the light, we observe how down on the ground there's essentially nothing left. And the only thing that's noticeable within that massive crater is Vegeta's carcass. Vegeta is still alive, but he is incredibly injured and essentially enough he's knocked out so Moro not only knocked out Vegeta by using his own attack against him but Vegeta is officially down for the count and he's unable to be productive enough in this battle given the fact that Moro had just knocked him out in front of everybody which given the overall situation that's when Moro went along to ask was that supposed to impress anyone such a grandiose name for such an ordinary blast as Piccolo went along to chime in this is worse than we realized if he's got Vegeta's abilities, that means he can use Force Spirit Fission. You guys always had the Fusion Dance, the Potara Earrings, and other means of combining as last resorts. But those would be rendered useless now. As Goku finally caught on as to what Piccolo was trying to say, the insinuation here is that even if Goku and Vegeta were to use the Potara Earrings or the Fusion Dance, Moro would simply rip them apart. And as we make our way back to Kame's lookout with everyone watching, Bulma went along to cry out, v Vegeta! With Oolong commenting, what now? They've got no one left who can fight. And that's when then they went along to chime in, I can go and restore their energy. With Eska having to comment, you're gonna fly down there yourself? 
with Bulma asking, are you sure about that? Isn't that way too risky? With Dende responding, probably, but as Earth's god, I can't just sit back and do nothing. Eska, Mr. Popo, take care of things here, with Popo responding, be careful, Kami-sama, because Dende's initial plan is to try and go out and actually heal them by himself, and with Dende having to leap on down, we also then observe how Krillin is low-key trying to make his way onto the battlefield, and in his hand is a small pouch of Sensu beans, with Krillin having to comment, Not good. Not good. Everyone's cheese signatures keeps getting smaller. If I'd only given Goku some Sensu beans before we split, damn it! I hope I can make it in time. So Dende is making his way towards the battlefield to heal everyone. Krillin is now making his way to the battlefield to heal everyone. So it's a matter of actually getting there and if they could make it there on time. And as we then go back to Piccolo and Gohan, Piccolo and Gohan both increased their power so much so that instead of sitting back and allowing Moro to carry on in doing what he was doing, they decided instead to step up to the plate and actually attempting to fight back in some way, shape, or form. And that's exactly what Piccolo and and Gohan wind up doing because despite having to be significantly weaker than Moro, they decided to go off and try their best anyway. And with Piccolo and Gohan having to attack from different sides, it's most interesting to see how Moro is just picking them apart easily because what Moro winds up doing is he first ends up countering Piccolo by having to sideswipe his hand, followed by then having to kick Piccolo so casually in the face. And that's when, of course, Moro redirects his focus to Gohan and he winds up kicking Gohan directly in the face, which which causes Gohan to go hurtling up towards the sky because Moro had obviously kicked both Piccolo and Gohan in two separate directions, and Moro's not dumb because as soon as he notices that Gohan is up in the sky, Moro winds up sticking his hand out and he fires a barrage of energy attacks directly at Gohan, and the only thing that Gohan can do at this point is defend himself, and that's exactly what Gohan winds up doing because as soon as Gohan shields himself, that's when we get to see how Moro's blasts are beginning to rain down heavy on Gohan, and at this point, Gohan really doesn't have the stability or the power to withstand this attack for too long because Piccolo actually notices how Moro is just unleashing an onslaught on Gohan, and with Piccolo trying to do everything he can to shift Moro's direction onto himself, what Piccolo winds up doing is stretching his arms out while he's on the floor and grabbing Moro by the ankles, and the reason why Piccolo had done this was to sway away Moro's focus in having to attack Gohan and now having to redirect his focus onto him, and as soon as Moro notices this, what Moro winds up doing is he fires a direct blast down at Piccolo, and as soon as this blast engulfs Piccolo to Piccolo's credit, by the end after the smoke and the dust settles, Piccolo is still shown clinging onto Moro's ankle. So, although Piccolo at this point is severely damaged, he's bloody, he's hurt, he's tired, he's still not willing to relinquish his hold in having to pin Moro in his place, and as soon as we get to see once the dust settles as Piccolo looks on up, he then went along to comment, I won't let go, even if you kill me, and that's when Moro turns his head and having to respond, <laughs> you haven't realized that I'm keeping you alive? You people are my meal, you know? So Piccolo is doing everything in his ability to make sure that that Moro really doesn't go anywhere, even if it kills him. But this, however, was the exact reaction that Piccolo was looking for because it created enough time for Gohan to actually come up with a plan to do something in giving our heroes leeway in this battle against Moro. So what Gohan winds up doing is mimicking what Gotenks had did in Dragon Ball Z, and that's create this circular ring of energy, which again is also called the Galactic Donut. And what Gohan winds up doing is tossing this ring down directly at Moro, and right before Moro Moro went along to further finish Piccolo off, what Gohan had done was wrap this ring around Moro in creating somewhat of a distraction and keeping him in place, and as soon as Gohan slams his fists together, what the galactic ring does is it encloses itself on Moro in keeping him in place. Which mind you, Piccolo still has Moro by the ankles, and now Gohan had limited Moro to only using one arm, which ultimately set the stage for Moro to be held in place as Gohan went along to comment, nice, as Piccolo went along to shout, UNLEASH IT NOW! 
Goku! But that is when out of nowhere, Super Saiyan Blue Goku comes swooping in by using instant transmission and winding up for a powerful and massive Kamehameha, the second we get to see how Moro slowly turns his head, he is only then met by Goku's face, who seems to be incredibly angry and incredibly focused on delivering this seemingly final attack that's going to put Moro out of his misery, and the second we observe how Goku winds up firing this massive Kamehameha directly at Moro, very similar to how Goku had done against Perfect Cell during the Cell games, unlike Cell's reaction when he was completely freaking out by Goku doing this, Moro instead is is remaining eerily calm as he went along to stick his arm out in trying to deflect and hold back the Kamehameha, which also goes as far as to showcase Moro's impressive feats by having to do such a thing, but even then, with Moro shown having to block off the Kamehameha, that is when Goku is shown having to pour more of his energy into this attack, very similar to how he did against Merge Zamasu in giving it all he had in this one attack to finish the job, and that was when Goku's Kamehameha had finally overtaken Moro in creating this massive explosion that shook the landscape that everyone around the surrounding area had felt the impact of this blast including Jocko, Piccolo, and Gohan, and because of this, Goku was finally able to land his decisive Kamehameha from point blank range until, as the dust began to settle, we slowly got to see how Moro's body was still intact, his legs, his arm, his torso, his abs, the only difference here was his left arm that he was using to hold back this attack, and eerily enough as we get to see how Goku's huffing and puffing, he's clearly exhausted, he's tired, Moro instead is not showing any signs that he's hurt, his facial expression isn't that of concern, he isn't scared, he isn't nervous, but instead, he is once again eerily calm, and as he then went along to look down on his left arm, he's speechless, he doesn't say anything, but instead is just eyeing at the massive gaping hole that he has coming from his left arm, and with Gohan shocked, Piccolo shocked, it's a moment of tension because really nobody knows what Moro's about to do or what his reaction is going to be until he slowly started approaching Goku by walking towards him, and even Goku's taken back by this because Moro's pretty tall, right? So as Moro leans on in, you get to slowly see how something is going on with his arm until he regrows his arm courtesy of Piccolo's genetics and having to be a Namekian, and because of this, Moro winds up impaling Goku right through the chest, which Goku in and of itself is absolutely taken back by this because nobody really expected, including Goku himself, that something like this was going to happen, and the way it actually went down was so barbaric and very different in a sense to where we normally don't get to see stuff like this happen in Dragon Ball Super to our heroes, but to Moro's credit, he had been impaling people ever since the beginning of this arc, ranging from impaling Raspberry to impaling the Namekians to impaling Majin Buu, and now Goku, to where as everyone is looking on, including Gohan, Piccolo, and Jocko, Goku is shown reverting back down to his base form in absolute agony with blood dripping from his mouth, there's blood gushing from his chest, Goku is not only battle damaged and wounded, he's tired and more importantly, he's on the brink of death. And as Moro removes his hand from Goku's chest, you can see the amount of blood that's beginning to pour out of his pectoral with of course Goku's body having to shake. Moro then went along to comment, yes. Piccolo's regeneration. Did I fail to mention that the abilities 7 3 copied are now mine forever with no pesky time limits? So, whatever abilities he had taken prior are now going to remain permanent within Moro's body, and whatever abilities he then possessed from 7 3 are now going to remain within Moro forever. As Gohan went along to shout, Dad! And in a very bloody and dramatic way, Goku falls to his knees and flops over towards Moro's thighs. As Moro went long to ask, huh? Don't go dying on me just yet, and with Moro kicking Goku in the face in a very vicious way, I love the way Toyotaro had envisioned and structured the overall paneling here because not only do we finally get to see blood and gore and violence, Moro then went along to stick his hand out and commenting, I need to devour your energy before you pass on. That was the point of all of this, so Moro still has the intention on stealing and taking all of Goku's abilities and powers before he dies, but it was right then and there where Goku's son Gohan would not sit back and watch his father suffer anymore, but instead, he decided to dash on down from the sky in his attempts of attacking Moro, as he then went along to connect a clean shot to the back of Moro's head, but even then, as of course Gohan is shown attacking Moro, 
nothing seems to be working. Gohan's attacking him, Gohan's punching, kicking, Gohan is doing everything he can out of the fury of seeing his father nearly be killed. He's not going to sit back and watch this anymore. He would rather die in having to try to do something to solve the issue rather than just standing back and not doing anything about it. And he's not stopping. He's doing everything he could at that point to avenge his dad, to do anything he could to put a dent in Moro, but Moro then winds up clenching his fist as he then so casually backhands Gohan across the face where the second we see how Moro's fist makes contact with Gohan's face, there is blood having to shoot from Gohan's nose, Gohan's mouth, as only then all it really took was one shot to bring Gohan down to where right dead center in between Gohan and Goku, Moro is still standing there not having to budge an inch. So Goku is lying directly across from his son and his son is lying directly across from his father and all it really took was simply one shot to finish the job. And with Moro then redirecting his focus to Piccolo, he then went along to comment, it seems that Saiyans receive a power boost when enraged. But hardly enough to fill the chasm between us, as Piccolo comments, darn you, as only then out of nowhere, Piccolo hears a voice, and this voice cries out, Piccolo, I'm headed your way. As Dende is using telepathy, Piccolo went along to ask, is that you Dende? With Dende responding, yes, if nothing else, I can restore everyone's energy, but then, Moro's ears begin to wiggle. As Piccolo then notices this, he then went along to cry out, Ah! Stop, Dende! No more telepathy! Because Piccolo knows that Moro knows. As Moro went along to then comment, I see another of your Namekian abilities. With Piccolo commenting, Damn it! Keep away, Dende! He was listening in, and the reason why he was able to listen in was because of Piccolo's DNA and his abilities that he has, of course, with Moro having to confirm this, by even asking Piccolo about these Namekian abilities. And with Jocko having to overhear this, he then went along to ask, listening, Dende, with Moro then asking, restoring energy, he said. The Namekian moving towards us has such an ability? As Piccolo shouts, curse you, Moro then continues, such a being could hardly pose a threat, but... And with Moro then raising his left hand, what he winds up doing is he fires this energy blast directly up at the sky, and at first it kind of seems as if this is somewhat of an attack that he's going to use to have rain down on Piccolo and Jocko, but instead, what this energy ball winds up doing is bursting in the sky and creating a massive energy bubble that's covering the entire battlefield in preventing anyone from leaving and allowing anyone to come in. So Moro had then purposely created this energy dome, this energy barrier to protect himself from having anyone else come in and to reassure himself that nobody leaves. So with that being said, Moro then went along to tell Piccolo and Jocko that barrier should keep out any unwanted nuisances and prevent you from escaping. So this is bad. And the second Dende actually gets to the barrier, he then comments, what? What what is this? What is this? And even Krillin notices as he went along to comment, oh come on! What is it this time? So they have absolutely no idea as to what had just happened, other than seeing for themselves now that there seems to be an energy barrier covering the battlefield. As meanwhile, back inside the barrier, what Moro winds up doing is force pushing both Piccolo and Jocko out into the distance to where they're both sent hurtling and crashing all throughout the landscape, and clearly enough, Piccolo is very hurt and very battle damaged, while Jocko right now is starting to now experience the power of Moro until then out of nowhere, both Android 17 and Android 18 jump in the middle of this battle to try and synchronize their attacks in ganging up on Moro, but even then, with Moro having to pick up quickly at the fact that the androids were about to attack him, what Moro winds up doing so casually is he tilts his arms back and he points his hands towards the androids in the symbol of a gun, and what he winds up doing is he shoots two singular key blasts directly at the androids, and this takes them out. So the androids are finished because these blasts also cause the androids to go flying out into the landscape and as soon as they hit the ground, once again, it's just down to Piccolo and Jocko. So the androids are finished, Vegeta is knocked out, and Goku's on the brink of death. And the only one standing while Gohan is also knocked out is Piccolo and Jocko. With Piccolo then having to utter, sorry Jocko, sorry for roping you into Earth's battle. With Jocko responding, knock it off. Moro broke out of our prison, and besides, Earth is my jurisdiction. If this planet's doomed to die, then it's my duty to go down with the ship. 
And that's when Piccolo asks, oh yeah? Then I won't feel as bad about this. And with Jocko looking on, he notices that Piccolo is beginning to unleash and condense a lot of his energy in the form of having to have his hands be put together for something with Jocko asking, uh, what's, uh, what's going on, buddy? With Piccolo telling him, that barrier is a blessing in disguise, since it'll keep any destruction contained. There'll be nothing left in here when I'm done, with Jocko asking, huh? But, 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 blowing yourself up? Uh, could you just hold off for a minute? I haven't made my peace. But before Piccolo could do anything out of nowhere, we then see how a special beam cannon comes out of nowhere and it pierces Piccolo right through the chest. It pierces Piccolo right through the abdominal section, very similar to what Piccolo had done against Raditz way back in Dragon Ball Z with Goku. And that's kind of the vibe that I got from this, especially with his own special beam cannon having to be shown piercing his chest. It was very unexpected and it really took everyone back, especially Piccolo, because he really wasn't expecting for Moro to do this, as of course then, with Piccolo having to be shown hitting the ground, Jocko then went along to shout, PICCOLO! With Moro then responding, no more nonsense from you, okay? Just lie there. And now, you're the only one left. Galactic Patrol. And with everyone's body having to be shown lying on the ground, Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, 18, 17, and Vegeta, the only person left standing among that group is Jocko, the Galactic Patroller. So Jocko is not only terrified out of his mind, but if you take a closer look at Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, Vegeta, the androids, everyone is bloody, everyone is wounded, they're on the brink of death, and the only person remaining on that battlefield with any sort of cognitive and conscious mindset is Jocko. And with Dende really trying to figure out a way to get inside this barrier, he then comments this is awful, I was completely useless, I couldn't defend the planet or help anyone, some god of earth, huh? Until then, out of nowhere, there is a hole created, and Dende winds up falling through this hole, and mind you, he wasn't the one that actually went along to create this hole, but instead, he just flopped on through, as he went along to ask, huh? The barrier just opened up, and as he looks back, we then observe how a familiar person steps down with his angel outfit and wielding his staff and commenting, This isn't over yet, God of Earth. As Dende responds, Ah, uh, uh, it, it's you! So Dende knows exactly who this is, and he is absolutely surprised that he's here. As we then go back onto the battlefield, poor little Jocko is shown holding his gun directly in front of Moro, as Jocko went along to tell him, St Stay back! I'm warning you! With Moro responding to be blunt, I've zero interest in your life energy for such a small portion, which means I've no need to keep you alive. Farewell. So Jocko attempts anyway to do whatever he could to even hold his ground by shooting from his gun and commenting, Buzz off, scumbag! And what's interesting is after Jocko fires this one shot from his gun, we can clearly see that this one singular shot is heading right towards Moro until Moro then notices how there is another blast right next to Jocko's, clearly indicating that if Jocko only fired one shot from his gun, then where exactly did the other shot come from? And with this shot having to finally make contact with Moro, there is a massive explosion that takes place in the distance, with of course the blast itself having to shake everything around Jocko, with Jocko having to put his hands up, the poor guy actually assumed that he was the one as an end result of shooting Moro with his gun that had this much impact on Moro as Jocko went along to then comment, Say what, huh? Uh, did I do that? And through the dust and through the smoke we get to see how Moro was shielding himself as he went along to utter, You. You embedded that shot with your own energy, but he wasn't talking to Jocko, but instead, he was talking to the person behind Jocko, and that person was none other than Agent Maris. As Jocko went along to comment, oh, that's when Moro went along to then ask, but you aren't really a galactic patroller, are you? And with Maris having to smirk by the very end and giving off a very confident tone, the manga chapter special then comes to a close. Now, this is a very, very bad situation that our heroes now find themselves in because it's not like one or two characters actually suffered L's during the course of this battle, but it was everybody collectively. It was Goku, Vegeta, 
the androids, Piccolo, Gohan, and by the end, what's most interesting about this is we're going to be seeing what Maris is going to do now that he's finally arrived on Earth on whether or not he's going to actually go against his brother and father's wishes in further having to break the law of the angels in constituting and using his full angelic powers as a means of stopping Moro, which Whis had already picked up on the idea that that was Maris's plan from the beginning and having to train Goku. So given the fact that he is on Earth right now, this begs the question, what exactly is he going to do? Is he going to further stall for time in allowing Goku and Vegeta, along with Jocko and the others to fully recuperate, or is he instead going to face off against Moro again, but only this time, he is going to further reveal to Moro as to who exactly he is, and reveal more of his angelic powers to him, because keep in mind, Moro still doesn't know that Maris is an angel. Moro has absolutely no idea on who exactly Maris is or what he's all about. The only thing that Moro knows of Maris is that he is a simple cop. He is just another galactic patroller. So this is now becoming very interesting because this is now a do or die situation. Moro is actually fighting to kill and he's willing to kill anybody who gets in his way. And this begs a lot of questions as to what exactly this is going to mean going forward in terms of approach because with Moro knocking out Vegeta and nearly killing Goku, it's safe to say that at this current point in time we can rule out fusion only because Goku and Vegeta simply don't have the strength or the capacity to even fuse to begin with, especially having to use the Metamarese fusion first versus the Potara earrings. But this also begs the question if we're going to see Majin Buu the Daikaio step in, if Maris is going to simply stall Moro until perhaps maybe we see another entity, a third party come to Earth, such as perhaps maybe Beerus and Whis. So this is what makes this chapter and this arc so interesting is the fact that this could actually go in one of many different ways and it's become so unpredictable in nature that you have to ask yourself on whether or not they're actually going to reverse Moro's power and have him become old again somehow by using Vegeta's abilities to his utmost advantage to reverse that or if we're going to see MUI, if we're going to see Beerus, Maris, a third party perhaps maybe since of course it was alluded we could have Dende pick everybody up being the fact that he is there with Maris so I think that Maris is going to possibly stall for time. I don't think that Maris is going to use his full power yet, but by the end of all of this, I want to get your thoughts in the comment section below and asking you guys three simple questions. Number one, how strong do you guys believe Moro is now by comparison to characters like Jiren, Broly, MUI Goku from the TOP, Vegito Blue, Beerus? I want to get your thoughts on how strong you guys believe Moro is now. And my second question to you is, what kind of a plan do you believe our heroes need to come up with in order to put Moro down for good? And number three, what are your thoughts and predictions going into Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter number 63, which again, will be available on August 20th. So be on the lookout for that again. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. If, of course, you guys are new to the channel, then I do encourage you guys to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to never miss a single upload on the channel, as well as giving this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button down below. Tune back in for the next video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll be seeing each and every single one of you guys down in the comment section below. Have a great day, everybody, and take care. Peace. And a quick little reminder before you guys go, if you guys are unaware, I do have a second gaming channel located down in the description box below, so be sure to head on over to Unreal Royale and hit that subscribe button along with turning on all notifications as to there, you guys will find all different kinds of gaming content that you will not get to find on Unreal and Gaming, titles and video games such as Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, Gears of War, Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle, Dragon Ball Z Legends, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkai, G3, Minecraft, Blair Witch, and many other retro games on that channel. So if you guys are into gaming, then make sure you guys subscribe over on Unreal Royale. I want to thank you all so much for your time, and I'll catch you all in the next one. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming. Also follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times. And if you don't, then very soon you will all be dead! <laughs> oh, did someone say unrelent gaming? Oh my god. The fuck's up, on? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! But, uh, Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs> Get over here! Tell these mortals that I am the biggest-
biggest Unreal Ed gaming fan. This is my moment. I'm a part of his notification squad. Universe 7 can have all the fun. I just want the food. And don't forget to leave a comment on this video. Show some love for the best community on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Kakarota!